Hi, I'm Kaylee Taylor. I'm Sean Collins. And I'm Janice Tran. And we're the co-founders of Student Energy. We're going to walk you through the history of Student Energy from our first event until today. So the concept for Student Energy um, wasn't actually a nonprofit at all. It was actually for a student-led conference. Um, so the idea started in 2008. Um, in that time, in 2008, the conversation and the dialogue around energy was quite polarized. We had climate deniers on one end, we had activists and a lot of advocacy, green advocacy happening on the other end. And um, as students, um, we didn't want to pick sides or engage in that. What we wanted was just a platform uh, where students could design um, and learn about the energy system from a more holistic perspective and have a program that was designed for students by students. Um, we wanted to learn um, from each other. We wanted to have something that was multidisciplinary so business students could speak to engineering students that could um, also speak to policy students and have um, knowledge uh, transfer that was at you know the student level not at the young professional level that was different than a young professionals conference you know we we weren't 10 years into our careers we were students um, really discovering and learning this landscape but at the same time we wanted to have leaders that were in the field that were experts in that space coming um, to the student community and being able to pass on the knowledge in a way that was impactful for them you know at the same time there was also a recognition from from students that the energy future that was upon us wasn't sustainable and um, what we really wanted to do was build a platform so that the students from across the world from developing developed countries um, from ones that wanted to work in oil and gas or in renewable energy whatever that you know su what sustainable energy meant for that particular student there was a platform for us to all work together with a common goal that we can design a more sustainable future for all of us. And so came the first International Student Energy Summit in 2009 in Calgary that had over 350 students from 30 countries come together to address these issues and learn from each other and from experts that we brought from all over the world. It was run by a planning committee of about 50 students from all different disciplines. We raised almost a half million dollars to make it affordable for students to attend. And overall, it was this incredible event that felt very empowering and exciting. And to be honest, we kind of thought that was it. We were all about to start our own careers, we were all about to graduate, and we thought that was a great thing that we did in university, and that's, that's all it's gonna be. However, the movement was already growing, and we started receiving phone calls, text messages, Facebook messages from people all over who were saying, when's the next one? Can I attend? Can I plan it? And that got us thinking, well, if there were to be a next one, where would it be? We thought that we probably wanted to do something kind of close to where the first one was so that we could support it, but that had a different energy context. And that's when we found two passionate students from the University of British Columbia, who we decided were the perfect next co-chairs and that we could support in building the next summit. Going into that summit, it became very apparent that there was interest to host something like this all over the world. We recognized that maybe it wasn't up to us to find a school and find students to do it, but rather to put it out to the community and see what came back, to ask them about uh, what they'd want to do in a program or how they'd like to show off their own energy system. And that was where the bid process was born. The thing about a bid is that it needs to be owned by an organization that makes the final decision and, and shepherds the whole process. And so we decided to incorporate Student Energy as a not-for-profit just after the 2011 summit. Uh, and that's really where the organization came from. Part of that became thinking about what else an organization would do to support young energy leaders as they think about how they're going to engage in the energy transition. And that's where our first strategy came from. And this was such an interesting opportunity for us in that we sort of now had this open canvas where we could decide what we needed to be and what we could be for our global audience. And so right around the time we started Student Energy as an organization, we did a whole series of offline and online uh, consultations and, and engagement sessions with our global network to sort of really understand what are some of the big problems that youth have in really becoming more impactful change agents in the energy system. What are the problems they were facing? What are the challenges? that they're facing, what are the gaps that exist that are preventing them from being more educated, more inspired, and more connected uh, as it relates to how we accelerate this energy transition. 
And some of the very first sort of focus areas from a, a community perspective was around the lack of educational opportunities. So the whole vision for our current energy systems map really came from students who were articulating that energy information was too complex, it was too technical, it wasn't in formats that sort of fit the uh, content consumption habits of our generation. And, and almost every single piece of what exists right now in the energy systems map came from those initial consultation sessions. And also at those events, we sort of really started to dive into the problems and challenges needed to unlock the chapter program. Understanding a lot of those students were talking about how the summit was a fantastic event, but they didn't have anything to go back to. They didn't have a community of like-minded individuals in their local community. The event's only every two years, and so you needed something from day to day or week to week that you could work on your local issues and, and surround yourself with really like-minded individuals. And, and it was sort of at this point in time we, re we realized that student energy had significant potential and, and if we continue to listen to the problems and challenges of our youth audience and respond to those with articulate and intelligent programming that we can achieve some pretty significant success as an organization. And it was also at this time we sort of realized that student energy doesn't belong to any one of us. Student energy belongs to all of us. It's going to be a movement. It's something that everyone needs to have the ability to pick up and carry forward. And we're really proud of what it's become today. So we're, we're really happy to be able to share a little bit of information just about where we came from and where we are today. Welcome to the movement.